This morning, we are paying a visit to Europe's strangest tourist attraction. This small church in a fairy tale town has a very dark secret. The inside is filled with over 70,000 human bones. Let's check it out. Good morning and welcome to another day in the Czech Republic. Today we are leaving Prague for the very first time to go and check out the historic town of Kutna Hora, which is about an hour and a half drive away. And we've actually got a private tour booked, so somebody is about to pick us up from our hotel to go and explore this historic place and it should be very interesting. So come on, let's go and check it out. Private tours or tours in general aren't usually our style, but we ended up being very glad to do this one because Kutna Hora has a very important place in Czech history. It's also one of the most popular day trips from Prague, thanks to the very drivable distance and the many sights to see in such a small area. Kutna Hora is home to around 20,000 people, and the first thing you'll notice is just how cute it is here. The entire centre of town is a designated UNESCO World Heritage Site that dates back to the 13th century and you can find some lovely spots to relax in and around the centre. Kutna Hora is still in the Bohemia region of the Czech Republic, which is of course famous for its beer. So there's a lovely little brewery here where you can sip on some local brews in some very cosy surroundings. And when you get hungry, there's an equally good place to grab a bite to eat. We stopped for lunch at this place, which I'm not even going to try and pronounce, but they served up some delicious locally sourced food at some very good prices. And it doesn't get much more local than where they sourced their chocolate from, but more on that later. We visited right at the end of November, which is normally a quieter time for tourism, but our guide told us that these empty streets have been much more common for the last two years. Historically, Kutna Hora is the second most important city in the region, and it's all thanks to silver. The land around here was once extremely rich with the precious metal, and a lot of huge silver mines were dug deep into the earth. So the centre of town is also home to the Italian court, a grand royal palace and former home of the Central Mint, which when it was founded in the 13th century, made this building the centre of economic power in the area. It was here in this courtyard where raw silver ore was turned into local currency. And these days, the building is now a large museum where you can get pretty hands-on with certain aspects of the minting process. It's heavy. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, really heavy. it's for your protection, so it's the heavy power. All of your power. Okay. All your power. Just two kilos. <laughs> the right way. I think it's nice. Yeah, nice. <laughs> so this is the town that was built by Silver. And looking down from a hilltop over everything else is the Cathedral of Santa Barbara. This spired Gothic church is a UNESCO World Heritage Site in its own right. And it sits at the end of a long bridge-like structure decorated with many religious statues, not dissimilar to the Charles Bridge in Prague. Construction on the church began in 1388, but it wasn't actually completed until 1905. And this church is extremely fitting for the town because Santa Barbara is the patron saint of miners. So alongside the religious paintings inside the church, you'll see many tributes to the former workers of the town. You can also climb upstairs to get a view down onto the main chamber and it also has a balcony up there as well with some lovely views over the surroundings. The nearby Assumption Church is also a UNESCO site with the current structure completed by the early 1700s. Inside it has some quite interesting features, especially the amazing spiral staircases. But these days, this town is probably most well known for a very different kind of church. One with a much darker story. 
The Sedlec Ossery is a funeral church that dates back to the 1400s. It was founded after an abbot from the local monastery returned from the Holy Land with a small amount of earth which was sprinkled around the cemetery here, making it a very popular place for local people to be buried. But then, in the 14th century, when the Black Death raged across Europe, many thousands of victims ended up being dumped here under the church in mass graves. Many years later, in 1870, a local woodcarver was tasked with piling up the many, many bones, but he ended up getting pretty creative with them. And stepping inside the church today is quite an experience. Because inside, you will find the most bizarre sculptures and displays made entirely with human bones. And hanging right in the centre is probably the most surreal of them all. A series of elaborate chandeliers that stretch all across the ceiling above you. Over 70,000 human bones were recovered, cleaned and assembled by one man alone. Some he piled into these big pyramids, and others he assembled into much more impressive and intricate designs. And when it was all done, he must have been pretty pleased with the results, because he even signed his name up on the wall. And after a visit here, you'll probably need a little bit of a pick-me-up. So I promise to show you where they sourced the chocolate for that amazing dessert. And this tiny museum in the centre of town tells the story of a Kutna Hora legend. This town was once home to one of the best chocolate manufacturers in the world, a company called Lidka. The factories here used to employ around 500 people, but when the founder was forced to leave the country during communist times, the brand disappeared overnight, along with the founder's secret recipe. But now, a group of locals have reclaimed the brand, and they're making chocolate under the Lidka name once again. And you can taste and buy some of their chocolates right here in the tiny shop, and learn about all the history from the owners themselves. And with that, we headed back to the bright lights of Prague.